Welcome to Living Faith Online with Pastor Connie McLean. as we move.
lift up our hands right here. Say, you have called me free. You have called me free. And I know what friend would say. He is jealous of me. Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. And all of a sudden, I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are. And I realize just how beautiful you are. And I realize just how beautiful you are. He loves me. Oh, he 
show them your response. smile on my face, there's a bigger one in my heart. To be loved of God, to be called of God, to be chosen of God, to be elected of God, to be selected of God, to be called a child of God. Hallelujah! Praise God! Good morning, family. Please take your seats. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for Holy Communion. If you already um, got your elements when you walked in, you're great. For those who did not get their elements, could you please raise your hands so the ushers can, uh, can bring the elements to you where you are? And for those of you who are joining us online, this is a good time for you to go ahead and get your elements together for Holy Communion. Just a word of warning. Whatever we do on a regular basis, we have a way of letting it become habitual and taking it for granted. Let's not take God or his love or his election and selection of us or everything that is put in place for our lives here or our eternal lives be taken for granted. So for the few minutes that this communion meal is gonna take place, I plead with you to let your hearts and minds be present in this place. Forget about everything else going on outside, the issues at home, whatever else might try to take your attention off of the Holy Communion. Leave it all behind and pay total, complete attention to what we're doing here today. Let us pray. Oh, Father, as we, your children, come before the throne of grace, we just thank you. We thank you, Daddy, from the bottom of our hearts that you chose us, you elected us, you selected us before the foundation of the world. While we were yet in our mother's wombs, you already knew us by name and you've called us to an eternal salvation to spend eternity with you. It cost us nothing, but it cost you everything. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for taking our sins, our iniquities, our transgressions, our guilt, our blame, our shame, and wearing it on yourself like a robe. The Bible says you were made sin for us. You put upon us your robe of righteousness. And now we are the elect, the selected, the chosen. You suffered in our place. You died on Calvary's cross in our place. You even went to hell, so we will never have to experience hell for ourselves. As we come together this morning, we thank you, Daddy, for transforming this physical elements into the spiritual elements that they represent. Thank you, Lord, for transforming this physical bread into the flesh of Jesus Christ that was ripped for us. Thank you for transforming this juice into the precious, precious blood that you packaged in the body of your son 
Jesus Christ when he walked on the face of this earth. We thank you for causing these elements to do in our bodies, in our souls, in our spirits, all that you have packaged and planned and purposed for it. We do not take it for granted because Jesus said as long as we eat his flesh and drink his blood, we have life, abundant life in us. We thank you for this, Daddy, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As I was preparing for Holy Communion, it became even more um, clear to me how important it is that we go to the right church and we are in the right church. I praise God for Living Faith Christian Center, don't you? I thank God for Pastor Connie, don't you? And I want to give her her accolades while she's here to hear it and receive it, not when she's not around. Pastor Connie, we thank you. We thank you for the preparation of the word that you bring to us every Wednesday and every Sunday. It's not easy. I know what I go through just to prepare one message when you ask me to minister. And you do this day in and day out, week after week. We thank you. You see, she not only brings us word on a regular basis to strengthen our spirit, because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But remember what happened last Sunday? She also is concerned about our well-being, the healing, the wholeness, the wellness of our souls and our bodies. We thank you, Pastor Connie. God has also instituted the Holy Communion for us. For those times when we don't have hands laid on us or we're not in a vicinity where hands can be laid on us. The body of Jesus was torn in order for us to eat and become whole in our bodies. The blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb of God was spilled so we can drink in order for us to become whole in our spirit beings, in our mind, our will, our emotions, so we can be released from the hold, the grip of the enemy. So I'm going to let Jesus tell it to you in his own words. Please turn with me if you can, or just listen in to John chapter 6, verses 53 to 58. And he says, Jesus was speaking to the Jews who were around him, gathered around him. Jesus replied to them, listen to this eternal truth. Unless you eat the body of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have eternal life. Eternal life comes to the one who eats my body and drinks my blood. And I will raise him up in the last day, for my body is real food for your spirit, and my blood is real drink. The one who eats my body and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. The father of life sent me, and he is my life. In the same way, the one who feeds upon me, I will become his life. I am not like the bread your ancestors ate and, I, and later died. I am the living bread that comes from heaven. Eat this bread and you will live forever. This is what we do when we come to communion. It's not just a ritual. It's, just, it's not just something we do on the first Sunday of the month. It's something we do for life here and eternal life. So as I go through this process, please go through it with me. Listen to the words and make them your words. Hold up your bread. Father, we thank you again for transforming this physical bread into the flesh of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, as we eat the body of Jesus that was torn for us, we declare and we decree that every vein, every nerve, every tendon, every ligament in our bodies healed, every joint, every marrow, our bones are healed. Our blood is healed. Every organ in our body is healed. 
we're healed from the top of our head to the soles of our feet because you sent your word and healed us. And because you promised us, Daddy, that the diseases you put on the Egyptians, you will not put on us. And we believe you, Father. As we eat this, we are made whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Eat. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hold up your juice. Father, we thank you for transforming this physical juice into the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb of God. As we drink the blood of God, we are delivered, we are set free. We are redeemed from every generational curse. Every curse in our father's line, every curse in our mother's line. We are even redeemed and set free from every personal curse. Curses we brought on our own selves by negative words we've spoken over our own lives. Negative words of others have spoken over us and even negative words we've spoken over the lives of others. We are released, we are redeemed, we are set free from every hold, every bond, every tie with principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. We are free because Jesus himself said who the Son sets free is free indeed. We are free. Drink to your freedom. Hallelujah. 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 Say along with me. I am completely healthy. In my spirit. In my soul. And in my body. Say it again. I am totally free. Totally well. Totally healthy. In my spirit. In my soul. And in my body. Hallelujah! The altar is open. The altar is open. Oh. Come on, lift your hands. He is a faithful father. Calling me out of the dark. Nights can I whisper what he said in the And he is a firm foundation. My anchor won't be moved. Storms may collide, but my soul is on fire with his word. When you listen to the sound Come on. 
on, speak it into the atmosphere. When listen to the sound. Power on my lips. Power on my lips. Jesus has broken the curse. Every generational curse is broken. Now speak to it right now. Who are you? Who are you, great mouth? You should not bow low. You should not bow low. Jesus has defeated the darkness. testimony I 
got a testimony. I got a testimony. I got a testimony that he never lost a battle. Come on, just think about everything is done for you. Oh my, oh my. Some of us should be dead and gone. But he's never lost the battle. He gave me peace. He gave me joy. He healed my body. So we never lost the battle. Come on, one more time. Lift your voices in here. Fresh wind blowing this room. Fresh wind blowing this room. Fresh wind blowing this room. Holy Ghost fire. Yeah. Fresh wind blowing this room. Fresh wind blowing this room. Fresh wind blowing. Lift your hands right here.
We want the fresh wind, fresh wind, fresh wind. Come on. Open up your mouth in the fresh wind. Yes, sir. Let your sound go with the wind. Let your sound go with the wind. Let your sound go with the wind. Say there's healing in the wind. There's restoration in the wind. Jesus is in the wind. Jesus is in the wind. We just need one touch, one touch, cause Jesus is in the wind. Come on, as the wind blows, lift up your hands and catch it right there.
Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we need your reviving. We need your restoring. We need your refreshing. Some of us had some long, hard week, a long, hard week. God, we just thank you for your presence that will revive us and will renew our strength. Glory to God. Hallelujah, in our mind, our spirit, and our soul. We just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for this time together in your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you for blowing on us. Thank you for blowing your life on us. God, we thank you for pruning us, for causing us to grow from taking away things that are not like you and causing us to grow and grow and grow and be restored and be revived. Hallelujah. We just thank you and we praise you. Father, we, we know that we need you. Without you, we could do nothing, Lord Jesus. So we thank you for all that you make available to your people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. We thank you that we have your power in us. We have your spirit in us. We have your life in us. The same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead lives in our mortal bodies, quickens and makes alive and revives these mortal bodies and we just thank you and we praise you we thank you God that your power is available to us to cause us to live a long life to live a happy life to live a peaceful life to live a life that's full of power and purpose we just thank you and we praise you praise you Lord thank you Lord Jesus God, we here at Living Faith Christian Center, we give you praise and glory and honor. We give you praise and glory and honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Aren't you get, glad the presence of the Lord is here? Amen. I've been hearing a lot of prophecies about churches closing down. God's going to sweep through his church. And he's going to take down the ones that aren't giving him glory and magnifying his name and his power and his holiness and his righteousness. Somebody say, not here not here glory to god hallelujah well once you fist bump one or two people or act like you're fist bumping them whatever do something in the name of ah, mr marcia salted minister yemi no she, she he can take it thank you praise and worship man Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Y'all, y'all are still up there because um, you shouldn't play so nicely. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, today I'm going to, if, if you don't mind, I hope you don't mind. I just wanted to finish what I started last week. Amen. And uh, it's funny, this morning, um, <laughs> so we're doing some spiritual um, spring house cleaning, amen, talking about us. Matthew chapter 12, where are you going? Nowhere? <laughs> Is she related to you? <laughs> well, at least she's related to you. I, I, I didn't know where she was coming from. Oh, cutie pie. Hey, you got to laugh, as somebody says. I don't know. Um, this morning, as I was getting dressed, um, I realized ministry-wise, and this is something we all need to do and something that we all can do, but ministry-wise, I realized that I'm the most happiest when I'm exposing the devil. Amen. Isn't that something? It just, you know, I'm like, oh, they don't want to hear that again this week. And I'm like, but then once I made up my mind and said, no, I'm going to finish, uh, I just got excited. I just, I just want to expose the devil because I'm, I'm tired of him holding people back. I'm tired of him holding the, the body of Christ back. I'm, I'm tired of him making people sick. I'm tired of uh, him making people uh, backslide because they're frustrated I'm just it just bothers me and it should bother you and so we're going to do a little bit more spiritual house cleaning um, and then so I just want to share some things with you um, let me let me read um, I want to read uh, out of the passion translation I just want to read um, Colossians chapter 2 starting at verse 14 amen it says, he canceled, talking about Jesus, he canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. Now think about that for a minute. Now, we've done some bad things in our past, isn't that right? Things that we're ashamed of, things that we're embarrassed about, things that we can't believe that we did or said, isn't that right? And so the enemy, the reason why I'm reading this scripture is because I want to expose that the enemy has no, no more power over us. And so we don't have anything to be ashamed of because Jesus wiped it out. The arrest warrant that was out for us, he canceled it. Okay, so we're not in trouble with God. Jesus already went through judgment for us. He became sin. He didn't sin. He became sin for us, amen, that we could become the righteousness of God. So what God did with us and in us supernaturally, he made us righteous. So we are all sitting and standing here. We're all in right standing with God. Tell somebody that. Say, you are in right standing with God. Okay, tell, tell somebody else. Say, you and I are in right standing with God. Say, no more shame, no more condemnation, just freedom in the Holy Spirit. We've been called to a life of freedom. He whom the Son sets free is free for real. <laughs> It's a fact, Jack, that we've been made free by the blood of Jesus and by his stripes. And it says he erased it all. See, the, the, we're exposing the devil because he wants you to think that God still sees it. But God said, I erased it all. Everything that was against you, yeah, it was bad. It was real. It was the truth. But he erased it. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. That doesn't mean that we, there, there aren't things in our soul, but 
he erased it and he made it so that our soul could be, uh, the scripture says that the word saves our soul. It's a continuous process. I thought I heard my phone ringing. Um, <laughs> he deleted it all and they cannot be retrieved. Now, thank God, God's, God's expunging. I, I know somebody, something was supposed to be expunged and it showed up somewhere. <laughs> But when God expose, uh, expunges something that's against you, it, it's expunged. It's gone. Amen? So, and it says, everything we once were in Adam, say sinful, has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Glory to God. Somebody say, thank God for the cross. Verse 15, it says, then Jesus, this is the Passion Translation, then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners. Led who around? All powers, all principalities, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, it says that our struggle is not with flesh and blood, with princip but with principalities, powers, rules of the darkness, wickedness in high places. And we do, so, so I want us to win this struggle. We struggle against, let me, let me tell you, demons, I'm, you know I'm reading out the book, Demon Hit List. I don't mind giving people credit. I'm not going to act like I preached and studied these things and wrote these things. So where I can give credit, I give credit. But demons are fallen angels. I mean, if you know, Satan rebelled. He took, they say, one-third of the angels with him, and they got kicked out of heaven. And so they fell to the earth. These demons, these evil spirits, they are disembodied personalities. So we're dealing with the, this invisible enemy, but they have real personalities. They have real characteristics, which is what I read out of that book. Uh, you know, uh, gambling, suicide, uh, all these spirits, they have characteristics. And so that's how you can identify them. Jesus asked the, 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 the devil, the man that was, had the lesion, a whole bunch of demons. Let me say a whole bunch. A legion. It's, that's at least 5,000. Uh, but, and um, let me say this since I'm on that scripture. But he said, what's your name? And so the devil likes to hide. But in that case, in, in many cases, a deaf and dumb spirit, Jesus healed them. Now they can talk. Now they can hear. Right? Uh, a blind spirit. Got Jesus heals them. Now they can see. And so you can identify a spirit by the characteristics, what it does to the person. See, Satan hates all of us in every nation, all around the world. It's not just America. It's not just you. It's not just me. He hates us. And his whole plan, you know, we can yield ourselves to God. That's why it's so dangerous. You can't straddle the fence. You can't be lukewarm. We're either, either serving God or we're serving the enemy, right? I heard somebody recently say, when you say that you don't have a gift from God, you are saying that you're not born again. Because according to Romans chapter 12 and other chapters in the Bible, God says he's given grace and gifts to every man. Matter of fact, we're supposed to use our gifts to minister to one another and to minister to people. And so either we're serving God or we're serving the devil, right? There's only two sides, right? Two sides to a coin, you know, there's only two sides. So we want to get all on the right side, which is God's side. And so these, these disembodied, invisible spirits, I remember, remember the story uh, well, this was legion when Jesus cast legion out and they said, can we go into the pigs? So Jesus let them go into the pigs and then they ran into the, the ocean. But um, so evil spirits, they want to demonize people 
In that case, they demonized the pigs. It didn't last long, but they demonized the pigs as well. But he wants to demonize human beings. And so that's why we have to recognize how he operates. Okay? So how do we know? How do we know? So last week I had said we need to begin to recognize when an evil spirit is trying to operate in our lives. So let's say sometimes, um, sometimes me personally, I'll feel nauseous. When, it, when an evil spirit is talking to me or trying to influence me or somebody else is doing something out of the flesh, I might feel nauseous on my stomach. So, so demons, you can tell. Oh, here, here we go. Thank you, Jesus. So characteristics, uh, let's say, of a familiar spirit or familiar spirit. And we read in Matthew 12 that when, a, when an unclean spirit uh, leaves, um, leaves a man, and then he comes back, and he looks inside, and, the, and nobody's doing nothing. And, and he says, oh, okay, it's still empty. And I explained to you how we can't just be Christians on Sunday. We have to be spiritual 24-7 because the devil is 24-7. So we have to be so wise. We have to be wise, and we have to recognize when he is operating in our lives and in our families. Do y'all see that? And so that means when we watch over our children, we should be able to recognize when certain spirits or uh, certain, uh, especially inherited spirits, are operating in our children. You know, if I were to line up a grandmother, a mother, and a, a granddaughter, there's a, a great chance that what the grandmother has, talking about sickness, or even some spirits. I know people who inherit spirits of depression. But that's not who we are. That's a spirit that has attacked you and is lying to you and, and giving you reason to not want to live, to, to not love yourself. Let me, let me read since, since we're there. I'm going to read what, uh, the characteristics so we can look back at our families and see, and see the action of the enemy. Suicide. I don't think I read this last week. The spirit of suicide. Now remember, these are disembodied spirits. They need humans to operate. Do you all understand that? Any humans here? Everybody's a human. I got five people raising their hand. The rest of y'all are aliens or something. I don't know. So all of us here are human beings. That means the enemy, our enemy, who goes about like a roaring lion, he tries to paralyze us, to tie us down, and convince us that we're no good, God can't use us, we'll never be successful, we'll never be healed, we'll never be married, you know, so forth and so on. And so they need human beings to oppress and suppress and demonize. Now, thank God if you're a Christian, you can't be um, possessed, but you can be very uh, heavily oppressed to the point that nobody can tell you're a Christian. Nobody can tell that the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead lives in you. Nobody can tell that you've been given authority and power over all the authority and power of the enemy. Nobody can tell because you're so heavily oppressed. So Satan wants to take a human being and push them down and use them. Remember, uh, you have to realize a, a evil spirit needs you to express themselves. They need a body to express themselves. They need somebody that they can express their uh, depressed characteristics through. They need somebody, a human being, even Christians, to express anger and hatred and prejudice through. See, they want to express their, their character and their personality. Tell somebody says that the evil spirits have personalities. 
So we have to recognize, we have to recognize that. So the spirit of suicide, it causes a person to be self-destructive. It causes a person to be depressed. It causes a person to be gloomy. It causes a person to be discouraged. It causes a person to want to see death. It, it, um, it, it's, it's, um, it causes a person, look, I thought about these dare, I, often you ever wonder how these people are such daredevil people? You know, the ones that do these crazy things like bungee jumping over a mountain cliff. No, I'm just kidding. You don't know if that bungee's going to break. Anyway, that's just me. Um, they, they, it says here Russian roulette. So that means somebody who puts a gun up to their head and wants one bullet in. So they, they like doing that kind of stuff. Somebody said, that's crazy. But that, that's a suicide spirit, and they'll do crazy, crazy stuff like that. Murder, su the suicide spirit brings a, 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 a sense of murder, despondency, despair. Spirit of suicide makes a person hopeless. Come on, Jesus Christ in you. Jesus Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Hope is in every believer. Now, maybe not the believer, but hope is in the hope. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory is, resides in you and I. Death wish, insanity, madness, spirit of suicide brings confusion. It works with rejection, right? So when a per that's not even normal. When a person wants to commit suicide, is it? It's not normal. When I think of people that shot themselves, I'm like, there's no way that I would shoot myself. But the spirit of suicide makes that person think that that's all that's left for them to do. To make that person think, I'm not worth anything, I might as well just kill myself. That's a lie. But it's that spirit called suicide that wants to get a person, they want to act out. See, they'll get, they'll get the person to commit suicide, and then they go on to the next person. Isn't that something? They wouldn't get people to commit suicide if the spirit died with the person. So then that spirit of suicide, they just go to the next person, again, through the family. I know a couple actors, uh, they committed... a. A one younger guy committed suicide. Come to find out his father committed suicide. Somebody say, that's a spirit. That's a demonic spirit who expressed themselves through suicide. Amen? And so you and I need to recognize, now that was drastic, but it does happen in the body of Christ. So uh, you can, you know, so you start being sensitive to how you feel, what you're thinking, because a spirit will cause you, he'll give you a thought, and I wanna, I wanna get to a scripture here. Um, uh, video, can you prepare 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 2, verses 10 and 11? But we have to recognize what a, how a spirit speaks to you, what, what an evil spirit suggests to you, whether it's rejection, uh, you know, whether it's suicide, whether it's gambling, you know, whatever. So we have to be, we have to be in tune with spiritual things. Be in tune to God so that the Spirit of God can help us recognize an evil spirit when it's operating on our lives. Even if, let me, can I say it this way? You got it legitimately through your ancestors. But if we look at this scripture, now there's a scripture that says the curse causes shall not come. But when I read this like this, and I'll research it some more, look, the, the curse, it, it, it'll, it'll come, but it shouldn't be able to land on you. It, it would have to be a, a, a family curse that you've already resigned yourself to say, well, grandmom had it, mom had it, I, I guess I'm going to have it. There's some families where the men die at age 50. And so or when they get around 45, they start getting scared because it's, it's in their family. You know what I'm talking about? But we don't settle for that stuff. We should live at least till 80, amen, by, uh, by reason of strength, and then we can live longer than that. 
There, there are people that aren't born again that live to a hundred and something. Then, well, why not the Christian who's got the resurrection spirit living on the inside of us? So we have to understand that. But let me just give you some characteristics, and then I'll share some verses. Let's say uh, you can tell when an evil spirit is around because the big one to me is fear, fearful. He'll make you immediately make you have thoughts of fear, fear of losing something, fear of being something that is not desirable. And so you just, you just become fearful and afraid when there's not even anything there. Some, uh, the spirit of fear will cause you to be inordinately or extra, extra fearful where it doesn't even make any sense. Why would you think that? That's nowhere near you. It's nowhere in your vicinity. You know, it's impossible. But it makes you fearful anyway. Maybe uh, the spirit will make you get a panic attack. Anybody ever get a panic attack? You don't have to answer. That, that's an evil spirit harassing you. You shouldn't be getting panic attacks, right? Why? Because you, you, you're strong in Christ. Ephesians 6, it says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We can't do this. We can't tackle evil spirits without the help and the power of the Holy Ghost, okay? So I, I want you to know that I'm not sharing this message to make anybody afraid. I don't want anybody to be afraid. We shouldn't be afraid. If we, if we knew, if we knew that God gave us the power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, when we realized that God, you know, I, I wrote down um, a couple of scriptures that I said I was going to start confessing every day. I'm created to cast out devils. I, I'm created, my calling is to lay hands on the sick and see, them re and see them recover, right? My calling and your calling is to t uh, take the enemy's power, go into every situation and, and, and kick him out of the situation, especially your own house and especially your own body. Remember in Matthew 12, he thinks we're his house, but we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. With the temple of God. Maybe you'll, uh, well, a panic attack will cause you to hyperventilate. Maybe you break out in hives. Somebody said, that's really panicking. Or you realize you're becoming irritable, right? That ever happened to anybody? Then check out your thoughts. It'll cause you to be depressed. Just all of a sudden, you know, I, I wrote down in my notes, see, God, in Isaiah 43, he says, forget the former days. Forget the former days. Behold, I do a new thing. And so God tells us or somebody tells us, maybe our job, our boss or something, and they tell us to do something new or something different. You hear what I'm saying? And then we immediately or people immediately, they go backwards to the last time they failed. But we have to learn how to don't take the past and bring it into the future. Don't take our past. Don't take our failure and bring it into the present. No, this is something new. We're going to do this this time. Okay, so we need to stop comparing all of our failures to what is happening right now. We can't move forward, right? No, when people learn how to ride a bike, they don't just stop riding the bike. They get on, they fall, they get on again. Well, you, we look at kids, just like they didn't fall the first time. You understand what I'm saying? So we have to stop remembering our failures and just be bold enough to do something that's new and just act like it's going to work this time. Act like I can do it this time through Christ. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Y'all get, get what I'm saying. <laughs> or you can tell when an evil spirit's messing with you, all of a sudden you become antisocial. Or you become impatient or anxious. Why? Because that's not the spirit of God. He won't make you be anxious. He told you be anxious for nothing but to pray instead. 
Y'all hearing me? So again, we're, tr we're, we're trying to uh, get used to always examining our thoughts, our feelings, which cause us to take action. All right? I'll get back to that. I want a, a video to put up 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. It says, now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. This is Paul writing to the Corinthians. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. This is somebody that they had, um, you know, released from the church because they committed a sexual sin. Uh, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Let me read that again. Least Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now, number one, who wants Satan to have the advantage over us? Right? That, that word advantage, let me see if I wrote down the definition. That word advantage, um, they have something over you. They have power over you. They're winning over you. And so Paul is saying not to let Satan have an advantage over you where he's more powerful. He's got the upper hand. Somebody say, no, we don't want that to happen. And so, so that's one of the attitudes that I have lots of times. I get mad because I don't want the devil to have advantage over me, right? Because God created us to have the upper hand, right? God created us. We're created that way to be victorious. Uh, at least Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That word ignorant, which is why I'm preaching today, that word ignorant, it means to not know. So we need to know and not be ignorant of Satan's devices. We need to know. I want you to know. So you, you're not ignorant of his devices. Now, I'm, I'm preaching to myself, too. Okay, and um, it says to not know through lack of information or intelligence. You know, the big thing now is artificial intelligence. Look, God, he doesn't have artificial intelligence. God's got real, supernatural, from heaven uh, intelligence. Amen? And so, <laughs> praise God. And so it's not artificial, it's real. So we need to know what God knows. Amen? So we don't want to be ignorant. We don't want to know through lack of information or intelligence. It means to not understand. We need to understand that we wrestle against real spirits that we cannot see, but you can recognize them through the personalities, okay? And it's not good. It's not a good personality. If, 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 you're not, if you and I are operating in power and authority, and victory, and boldness. I, I keep thinking of Joshua chapter 1 where God told Joshua, he said, be strong and of a good courage. Right? Psalm 27, it says, uh, and I forgot what verse, but it says, wait on the Lord. It says, be strong and courageous. And I, I believe it's saying, and then I will strengthen you. So we have to take a step towards being courageous, and then God will strengthen us. He's not going to strengthen us first. He's a God of faith. We have to do it on purpose. So he says, you be courageous, you be strong, male or female, and then I will strengthen you. So we have to do it first. Tell somebody, you be courageous first, and then God will strengthen you. Why? Because it's faith. It's faith. Amen? Um, and the word devices is the Greek word noema. It's a mental perception. Okay, so we're not ignorant uh, of his devices. It's a mental perception. I'm bringing us back to what I was talking about, how, how we think. Uh, devices, it means a mental perception. So Satan wants to give us his mental perception. God wants to give us his mental perception. But the devil wants to give us his mental perception. The devil wants us to see things the way he wants us to see things, in the wrong way and in the wrong light. 
right? He's not on our side. But God wants us to see things his way. Y'all hearing me? I'm, I'm going to make myself be finished because I'm running out of time. It was good worship, though. Um, it means devices we are not. It means an evil purpose. Remember, either we're working for God, serving God, or we're serving the devil who is, wants us to lose. He wants us to fail, right? He doesn't want us to see victory in life. God wants us to see victory, right? But so if we don't serve the God of victory, we're going to end up falling over to the devil's side, and then he, he shuts down all the plans that God has for us. But it was due to our ignorance. It means the thoughts. It means the mind. So God doesn't want us, the reason why I'm, again, sharing this message is God doesn't want us ignorant of the devil's mind games, the gods of the devil's mental perception. We, that's why we have to read the word of God. I wanted to say this today. You have to read the Bible. You have to read the Bible. You won't know nothing from nothing if you don't know the word of God. There's nothing to compare. So when the devil tells you something, you don't have the word of God to compare it and say, no, no. Like when the devil comes to put negative thoughts in our head, we should be able to say, get out of my head. You get out of my head, you get out of my thoughts, scram. Get out of here. But if we think the thought is us, if we think the thought is our culture, if we think the thought is our heritage. If we think the thought is, this is how it is. This is how it's always been, right? So, but we can't think that. We need some new thoughts. So you have to renew your mind so that you can be victorious. Amen? Let me just read some of these things. Some of these things and, um, uh, you can write down Ephesians 6.12. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness, weaknesses, wickedness in high places. So those are levels of, of spiritual darkness. You know, the devil's very organized, and, and Christians aren't. So we need to know what's happening. Ephesians 4.27, you can write this down. It says, to give him no place. It's another reason why I'm sharing this message. If we don't know any better, we'll give him place. That word place there, I believe it means topos. It also means territory. So that means, okay, you're doing good in your money. You know, um, you know you're, you're uh, successful in business. But then there's some topos, there's some place in your life where you struggle. I'll use the example of depression again. So... The devil has that place in your life. You're doing good here, but over here, you're still giving the devil place. And the thing is, we don't want him to have any place, no place. And it says, give him no place. Give him no place. Make no room for him. Kick him. We're supposed to kick him out of our lives. No, devil, you can't have any part of my life. None. I'd turn none over to you, right? And if you try to come take it, we, we got a battle. We're going to struggle. But you know what? We have more power than he has. And that's why it's supposed to be, be strong in the Lord. I think the Amplify says, and then the power of his might, it says something about being infused. See, we, we just don't understand. We got we to gotta step out in faith. We, we have to do what God says to do. And then when we do it, then he infuses us. Infuse, that's serious. He infuses us with his strength and his power. That's deep. It didn't say a backpack. It didn't say a handbag. He said, he, I'm going to infuse my power into you so that you can be victorious. But if we chicken out, that can't happen. You understand? So, all right. First Peter 5, 8, you can write that down. <laughs> the devil is constantly trying to intimidate you, threaten you, like the news that we're watching, 
the, we're, current, we're always bombarded with bad news. Well, the devil wants to do the same thing to our minds. He wants to bombard us. Amen? Let me see some of my, um, my notes here before we close. Um, yeah, yeah. So we can't kill the devil. We can't get rid of him. It's not time yet. But we can sure kick him out of our lives. Amen? Greater is he, 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The devil is in the world. Satan is the God of this world, but he's not God. Amen? And so we can't get, kill the devil, but we sure can kick him from, uh, uh, keep him from killing us. We can't throw him in the pit, but we can sure throw him out of people. <laughs> we can cast him out of people, and we can throw him out of our lives. People have drug spirits, alcohol spirits, lust spirits, suicide spirits, incest spirits, violent spirits, abusive spirits, lying spirits, swearing spirits, unclean spirits, gossip spirits, tobacco spirits, gluttony spirits, and on and on and on. Amen? And so we don't want it. We don't want it. Amen? Tell the devil, say, devil, this is my house. Say, I'm the temple of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, unfortunately, I have to stop there. You can write down Acts 10.38 in the Amplified. It says, how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power. And he went about doing good and in particular curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil for God was with him. Right? Somebody say, that's, that's now my assignment. It's not just my assignment. It's not just the minister's assignment. It's not just an evangelist's assignment or an apostle's assignment. It's our assignment. It's our assignment. Amen? All right. I'm just going to end up now with um, just some declarations. Amen? Are y'all getting anything out of this? So, identifying the spirit or the demon is key to casting it out. It's the key to casting it out is by identifying it. Amen? So that he doesn't slip through our fingers. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I want you to stand right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to address... Um, I want to address the spirit of suicide right now and the spirit of depression. You can write this down. This, a spirit of trauma. If you've been through trauma, it opens the door to other spirits because it lets fear in. And so it, it can make you afraid, right? It can make you think that God doesn't protect you. It makes you think that you're not safe. Right? So when you experience trauma in your life, you need to get that spirit of trauma out of you and off of you because it holds you back. All this stuff is designed to keep us from knowing who we are. Amen? And we need to know who we are. Somebody say, I'm powerful. Say, I'm, I've got God's DNA. I'm a son of God. I'm an heir of God. I'm a child of God. Say, I have faith in God. Say, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Say, I have been delivered from every demonic spirit that was kicked out of heaven. I have power over him. I have power over it. Say, there's nothing that the devil can make me do. I have to cooperate with him. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I tell you, devil, and all your demons, 
I am God's house. This is my house. I am blessed. I am happy. I am fortunate. I am empowered to prosper. Devil, I kick you out. I kick you out now, out of my mind, out of my body. I kick you out of my purpose. I kick you out of my cells. I kick you out of my money. I cast you out of my children. You come out of my children right now in the name of Jesus. You will not deter their destiny. Say, devil, I cast you out. And every maneuver, every plot, every plan you have devised against me. Say, I know about you now. I'm not ignorant of your mind games. I tell you now to get out of my mind. Get out of my thoughts. You're an intruder. You are violating my rights in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to lift your hands. I don't know who it is. Lift your hand. In the name of Jesus, Father, by the power and authority invested in me, I command every spirit of suicide operating in people in this room. In the name of Jesus, I command you to loose these people's minds right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would flood them with joy and purpose right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, spirit of suicide, we kick you out right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I cast out that spirit of inheritance of depression right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, my grandma, my granddad was depressed. My mom and my dad were depressed. But in Jesus' name, I rebuke depression right now in the name of Jesus. I cast it out. I resist you in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to live my life for God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, tell the devil again. Devil, demons, influence, get out of my life. Get out of my head. Get out of my heart. In the name of Jesus. Say, I am powerful. I am not pitiful. Say, I am called to make a show of you, devil, openly. You will no longer manipulate me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we know we've been declaring this to be a new season. But I don't want to leave this one important thing out. There's a prayer in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's, this is called authority and dominion. It says, I decree that I rise up and take my rightful place of authority and dominion against the evils and darkness of this world. I say I shall not be intimidated. I shall not be intimidated. I shall not be bullied by an anti-Christ, anti-anointing spirit. Say, I am anointed. I'm just adding that. I declare that I boldly tread upon all the powers of the devil. I prophesy that I am well equipped to wage spiritual warfare and come out with a decisive win. Somebody go like this. <laughs> I say that the prophetic words in my mouth are saturated with power. I say that I shall have the taste and grace upon my words to speak in places and regions that aren't receptive to the Word of God. And that could talk about a situation in your house. 
that's been stubborn and hanging around. I say, I carry weightiness from the Spirit of God upon me. Come on, y'all, say it. I say, a new authority comes upon me and my prayer language and my prayer life. I declare I will walk in all levels of dominion that Christ has established for me. And I take my rightful place of divine rule in Jesus' name. I said, I say, I take, I take my rightful place of divine rule in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now I see somebody, your mouth's not moving. Guess what? And that devil's not going to move either. Until you open your mouth, nothing's going to happen. God gave us a mouth on purpose. He didn't give us a mouth to cuss people out. He didn't give us a mouth to, to confess defeat. And, and, and pity and all those things. God gave us a mouth so we could declare and decree. Amen. What the Lord has said unto me. Amen. Whatever God says, we have a license to say it. Whatever God decreed, we have a right to decree it. Praise the Lord. Woo! And God will back up our words with his power. Amen. Glory to God. What would a cop look like if he didn't exercise his authority? He might as well just go home. She might as well just go home. So we want to express our authority. Glory to God. We'll give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So start recognizing when the enemy is speaking into your ear. If it doesn't make you feel good, if it doesn't make you feel powerful, if it doesn't make you feel like you're saved, if it makes you feel unworthy, if it gives you no hope, it's not God talking to you. Hallelujah. It's not God talking to you. Hallelujah. Pastor, the Spirit of the Lord says, I say unto you this day that I have shifted in your lives. That you will witness a power that you've never seen before. Amen. Begin to believe what thus saith the Lord. The pastor has received from my heart to your heart that you would walk in the assignment that I placed you in the earth to do. The devil has had you bound too long, saith God. He says, today I have unlocked and I have loosed the assignment from you. Now you have to walk in it. You have to believe it. You have no longer the position of being fearful, but being powerful and walking in the authority of the Lord God Almighty. Do not allow for your minds to be deceived any longer, saith God. For I called you this day. Take your rightful place and be bold and be strong and be powerful you have to work with your powerful authority with your pastor to build what i've assigned this house to do so arise god says arise and be strong in the lord and the power of his might in jesus Amen. name Hallelujah. i want you to understand one more time Hallelujah. <coughs> all right this is a um a natural action to demonstrate a spiritual move. Now, the word that she shared, it talked about a shift, that there's been a shift. So right now, as to exercise your faith, to demonstrate something in the spirit, I want you to shift from where you are. You might even be standing at the same seat that you sit in every Sunday. I want you to just move to the right or to the left to demonstrate you making the shift to what God is doing. Just move to another part if you can. We're making the shift. We're no longer stuck, no longer stuck. 
Okay. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's done. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Okay, you can be seated. Hallelujah. Look, this needs to be training ground. I was just talking to one of my deacons. By the time anybody leaves here, you should know how to lay hands on the sick. You should know how to cast out devils. You should know how to preach the gospel, get somebody saved. Look, we're all supposed to demonstrate our power in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to um, just ask anyone who's watching, anyone who's in the room, if you've not asked the Lord Jesus, if you've not accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior, I want us to do that right now. So if you're watching online or, again, you're here in this room <clears throat> and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, or maybe you're here and you want to rededicate your life. You say, I've been, I've strayed away from the things of God, but I'm coming back. I'm back. I'm back and I'm ready. So if that's you, I want you to just repeat this prayer <clears throat> after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that I'm a sinner or that I'm a backslider. I also believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I also believe that God the Father raised you from the dead on the third day to live forever so that I could receive Jesus as Lord and live forever with him. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you now to come into my heart, come into my life, be my Lord, be my Savior, be my Master. I submit my life to you. I repent, I return from my wicked ways, and I turn to you. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Today, you are my Lord, my Savior, my Master. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Did anybody in this room pray that prayer? Maybe you got saved for the first time, or you rededicated your life? Amen. I won't ask you to say anything or do anything, but it helps if you just go ahead and make it public. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, we just thank you. If, if you uh, received Jesus as your Lord and you're watching online, please call our church at 856-661-8110. We would love to talk with you, get your, your name and your address, and we will send you a package that you would have received if you were right here in person. So, but welcome to the family of God, it's, if that's you. Come on, let me, faith, let's give them a hand. Praise the Lord. Well, let's welcome Miss, Minister Yemi for tithes and offerings. Glory, hallelujah. Are you excited? Are you excited? Amen, because this is, this is a new level. Pastor, thank you so much for the word. You know, you, are, you, know, you know, the mark of a good pastor is when they become transparent. You know, pastor was so transparent about the attacks of the enemy. And she's explaining to us how, it, you know, they try to attack her. So if a pastor tells you that, it makes you realize that, you know what? She's human, too. She goes through stuff, too. And if she can do it and she's teaching me how to do it, then I can overcome this. One thing I learned from you this morning, Pastor, is I have to keep telling myself I am created to cast out devils. I am created to lay hands on the sick and they recover. Can you say that? I am created to cast out devils. I am created to heal the sick, to lay hands on the sick, and they recover. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. That was, that's another level preaching for me. Hallelujah. Let's prepare our hearts and mind for tithes and offering. And if you're joining us uh, online, 
please prepare your tithes and offering. You know, tithe is of God, and uh, offering is something that you do in addition. You know, God loves a cheerful giver. Go with me into the Word of God. I'm reading Proverbs 11, and I'm reading it from the Amplified. This is what it says in the Amplified, Proverbs 11, verse 24. It says, there is the one who generously scatters abroad and yet increases all the more. And also, there is the one who withholds what is justly due, but it results only in want and poverty. In other words, there are two types of people. There is one that gives generously, and there's the one that holds onto the little that they have, and there's a difference in the result that they get. The first one who generously scatters, who generously gives, he increases all the more. But the one that holds on to the little pennies that they have, they only end up in poverty. So the generous man is a source of blessing, and he shall be prosperous and enriched. And he who waters will himself be watered reaping the generosity that he has sown. Isn't that awesome for the, the generous person? Who's a generous person here today? You know, generous in everything, in love, in money, in serving, in everything that you do, he said, let's do it generously, amen? Uh, video ministry, could you please uh, show us uh, the video that tells us how many ways we can give? Thank you. Here at Living Faith, we have made giving easy by using electronic options as much as possible. You can text to give by texting LFCCNJ to 77977. You can give once or set up as a recurring gift. Just enter in your details, confirm your gift, and you're done. You can give through our LFCCNJ Church app. This method will look similar to text to give The iOS version of the app can be downloaded at the App Store, or you can get the Android version on Google Play. You can also give online at lfccnj.com giving. If these options are not possible, you can obtain a pink envelope and deposit it as you leave. We thank you again for joining us today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for giving. Like I told you before, God loves a cheerful giver. Please don't forget, as you know, for those of us in the church right now, when you're leaving, don't take your tithes and offering with you. I've done that before. I fill it out, and I walk out with it. There are two boxes in the back, you know, so drop them there. Thank you so much for your giving. Could you all stand so we can uh, say our confession, our tithes? Tithes and confession. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Are we ready? All right, let's go. Dear Heavenly Father, in obedience to your word in Malachi chapter 3, Hebrews chapter 7, and Matthew 23, 23, we come before you and before Jesus, our great high priest, to worship you as we bring the tithe and an offering. LFCC is our storehouse chosen by you for us, where you've placed your name and where your spirit leads. Heavenly Father, we remember that we were in darkness and slaves to sin, but we called on the name of the Lord Jesus and you delivered us and brought us into the kingdom of God. We acknowledge that you are our provider and our source, not our jobs, nor our bank accounts, nor the government, but you, Father, through Christ Jesus. Therefore, we're no longer limited by the world's economic system, inflation, economic depression, poverty, lack, debt, nor any other part of the curse has power over us anymore. We thank you that the windows of heaven are open unto us because we are tithers and givers. Therefore, you've rebuked the devourer for our sakes, and we believe we'll receive our blessing from heaven when 
now in Jesus name amen hallelujah if you believe that raise up your hand say I believe and I receive in Jesus name now we're gonna bless the seed that we are sowing right now say seed I bless you I send you out now you go and be a blessing and return back to me many foes so that I can give again and again and again in Jesus name amen glory to God welcome pastor Connie again and praise the Lord glory to God well we don't have any hot topics announcements so um, right uh, we have Wednesday online service, of course. We have um, next Sunday, we recognize each one win one. That's correct, right? Second Sunday. Yep, yep. And um, that's it. That's it. Praise the Lord. All right, everybody. You can stand to your feet. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Amen. Praise God. God is good. He's doing things. This is a new season. It's springtime. And things, so get ready for things to spring forth. Shall you not know it? Amen. So I pray that um, <laughs> so I pray that you look for your harvest, you know, and look for the new things that God wants to do in your life. Oh, first-time visitors. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any first-time visitors today? We just want to acknowledge you. We don't, you don't have to say anything. Hi. We got somebody over here. Yay, hi. Welcome. Come, ba come back. You know where we live now. <laughs> but it's good to have you. God bless you. We hope you were blessed by the service, by the word, and encouraged. Amen. Praise God. Well, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. And Father, as in a play that I played in years ago, we are warriors. We are not wimps. So, Father, we just thank you. We praise you. <laughs> yes, I used to be an actress. <laughs> but, Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Father, we thank you that we are victors and not victims. We are powerful and not pitiful. Father, help us to recognize during the course of the weeks and months ahead, when we do feel pitiful, when we do feel powerless, we know that we are being attacked and that we will come out fighting with our decrees and declarations of your word to fight the enemy. So Father, we just thank you and we praise you. Father, I declare in Jesus' name, that every person under the sound of my voice, they will fulfill God's plan, purpose, and destiny for their lives with nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking in the name of Jesus. Father, I call all you people under the sound of my voice blessed, happy, fortunate, power to prosper, and to be in me. Somebody say, I'm blessed. And so are you. All right. Love y'all. Thank you for tuning in to Living Faith Online with Pastor Connie McLean. Please join us again next time. God bless you.